The 35th president of the United States, John F. Kennedy, remains the youngest American to ascend the presidency. He was 43. However, his term was cut short when he was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald on November 22, 1963, at the age of 46. Kennedy was one of two American presidents to have died before the age of 50. The other was James Garfield. To this day, he remains the last president of the United States to have been assassinated while in office. President Abraham Lincoln, James Garfield and William McKinley were the other casualties. This is a full story of the assassination of President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was born on May 29, 1917 in Brookline, Massachusetts to Joseph Patrick Kennedy and Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy. John F. Kennedy, or JFK as he was popularly known, came from a line of Irish immigrants. They would later become an established family in the city of Boston. Fondly called Jack by his family, Kennedy was a second of nine children. He had an older brother and seven younger siblings, five girls and two boys. As a young boy, Kennedy often fell sick. He suffered from whooping cough, measles and chicken pox. He also suffered from scarlet fever, which soon spiraled into a life-threatening disease, making him an avid reader while on bed rest. John F. Kennedy attended different schools while growing up. First, Devotion School, then Dexter, and afterwards, Riverdale. As an 8th grader, he attended Canterbury School. He eventually went to Choate School together with his older brother, Joe, where he completed high school. Afterwards, he went on to Princeton University and later Harvard University. While in college, his father, a successful businessman, became an ambassador to England. As a result, Jack spent part of his college years with his family in England. As a college undergraduate, he joined the football team, and although he could not play as well as his brother Joe, he was determined. Unfortunately, while he was playing, he suffered an injury and ruptured a disc in his spine. This would be the start of the many operations on his back. John F. Kennedy graduated from Harvard University in 1940, at the time, tension had already started brewing around the world, and it later erupted into the Second World War. Kennedy, a senior at Harvard, wrote a thesis and later had it published. It was titled, Why England Slept, and it chronicled the reason behind England's resistance to joining the war. In 1939, the Second World War broke out. A year after graduation, Kennedy and his brother, Joe, joined the Navy. He became an intelligence officer and was in command of a patrol torpedo boat, the PT-109. He was charged with the duty of sinking enemy ships. In August 1943, an event took place that changed his life forever. While on the South Pacific Ocean, Kennedy and his crew members were hit by a Japanese ship. His back was terribly hurt during the collision and two of his crew members died. Despite his injuries, he saved the other members of his crew, having them sail to shore. Six days later, they were eventually found by two native islanders. Kennedy carved a message into the husk of a coconut and had it sent to the Navy through the islanders. They were all rescued afterwards and he was sent to the hospital for an operation on his back. After the war had ended and Kennedy returned home, he was awarded the Navy and Marine Corps Medal for his leadership and courage. He was also awarded a purple hat for his injuries. John F. Kennedy grew up under the influence of his grandfather, John Francis Fitzgerald, whom he was named after. 
His grandfather, who was known as Honey Fitz, was a mayor of Boston who also served as a U.S. representative for Massachusetts. Kennedy would go on to replicate the legacy of his grandfather. At the time, the war had ended. John F. Kennedy began considering what job he could take on. He considered becoming a teacher and a writer. However, the death of his brother Joe during the war changed the whole narrative. His father went ahead to convince him to run for Congress in Massachusetts. In 1946, he won his first election and became a Democrat congressman for Massachusetts, the same as his grandfather. He served for a period of six years and in 1952, he was elected to the U.S. Senate. As congressman, he advocated progressive taxation, the extension of social welfare reform and more low-cost public housing. Shortly after he was elected a senator, Jack got married to Jacqueline Bouvier. He was 36 years old while she was 24. Jacqueline was a writer with the Washington Times Herald at the time. At the start of their marriage, Kennedy suffered severe back pains and had to undergo two critical operations. While recovering from surgery, he wrote a book titled Profiles in Courage. The book detailed the lives of several U.S. senators who had put their careers at risk while fighting for what they believed in. The book was later awarded the Pulitzer Prize for Biography in 1957. In the same year, Kennedy had his first child, Caroline Kennedy. During his re-election to the Senate in 1958, he won by a margin of 874,608 votes, the largest ever in Massachusetts politics and the greatest of any senatorial candidate that year. Having served as congressman and senator, John F. Kennedy became increasingly famous over time. On July 13, 1960, he was nominated as the Democrats' candidate for presidency. He chose Lyndon Johnson, a prolific senator from Texas, to run with him as vice president. Kennedy started spending long hours at work. He traveled around the country declaring his presidential manifesto. On November 8, 1960, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was elected President of the United States of America. The election was a very close one. He defeated his opponent, the Republican Vice President Richard Nixon, with just over 100,000 votes. At age 43, John F. Kennedy became the youngest man to be elected as President of the United States. He was also the first Catholic to be elected to that position. Before his inauguration as president, he had his second child, John Kennedy Jr. You, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. That you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of your ability. And will, to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Uh, On January 20, 1961, John F. Kennedy was sworn in as a 35th President of the United States. His inaugural speech went on to spur millions of Americans to apply for public service. President Kennedy had such a great interest in the history of America. He was saturated with America's mission of becoming the first nation dedicated to the revolution of human rights. As President, one of his acts was the creation of the Peace Corps. The initiative, which is still active today, empowers several people with the adequate skills necessary to help take care of people around the world. The volunteers of the Peace Corps would leave the United States for two years to leave and work with people in different countries. They would take on several jobs as teachers, farmers, builders, nurses and doctors.
We observe today not a victory of party, but a celebration of freedom, symbolizing an end as well as a beginning, signifying renewal as well as change. For I have sworn before you and Almighty God the same solemn oath our forebears prescribed nearly a century and three quarters ago. The world is very different now, for man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. And yet the same revolutionary belief for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe. The belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. We dare not forget today that we are the heirs of that first revolution. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America will do for you, but what together we can do for the freedom of man. <laughs> Finally, whether you are citizens of America or citizens of the world, ask of us here the same high standards of strength and sacrifice, which we ask of you. With a good conscience, our only sure reward, with history the final judge of our deeds, let us go forth to lead the land we love, asking his blessing and his help, but knowing that here on earth, God's work must truly be our own. During Kennedy's presidency, the United States was in the middle of the Cold War with the Soviet Union. Both nations had nuclear weapons and were testing these weapons. The most worrisome of these tests was the Cuban Missile Crisis of 1962. The Soviet Union had placed nuclear weapons in the island of Cuba, just near the United States. President Kennedy ordered a quarantine of Cuba and was eventually able to convince the Soviet Union to sign a treaty the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty that saw an end to the testing of nuclear weapons. John F. Kennedy had a strong interest in foreign affairs. Prior to his inauguration as president, the relationship between America and Latin American nations had deteriorated. He was therefore determined to improve relations with Latin America. Through the creation of the Alliance for Progress, he proposed a loan of more than $20 billion to Latin American nations that would promote democracy and undertake meaningful social reforms. At the time, this was the largest U.S. aid program created for the developing world.
Another one of JFK's missions while in office was the exploration of outer space by NASA. He wished that the United States led other countries and encouraged the astronauts to explore outer space. He was the first president to ask Congress to approve more than $22 billion for Project Apollo. The goal was to land an American man on the moon before the end of the decade. Although he did not live to see it, the goal was eventually accomplished as Neil Armstrong became the first man to land on the moon in 1969. Racial discrimination was one of the many issues President Kennedy had to deal with. In 1963, he proposed a new civil rights bill to Congress. He also went on television and gave several speeches asking Americans to end racism. His administration heralded the beginning of new hope for both equal rights for African Americans and the peace of the world. By late 1963, President Kennedy had begun campaigning for the 1964 presidential elections. On November 21, 1963, he flew to Texas with his wife to give several speeches. The next day, together with his wife, Jacqueline, and Texas Governor John B. Connally, they drove past a boisterous crowd in an open motorcade. At 12.30 p.m., three shots were fired, with two striking the president at the base of his neck and head. The other bullet hit Governor Connolly. He was seriously wounded, but he recovered. President Kennedy was rushed to the Parkland Memorial Hospital, where he was pronounced dead shortly after. Kennedy's killer, Lee Harvey Oswald, was later found and arrested by the police at a theater. At 1.30 p.m., he was formally arraigned for the murder of President John F. Kennedy. Unfortunately, Oswald never lived to see trial for his alleged murder. On November 24, 1963, two days after killing Kennedy, Lee Harvey Oswald, while being taken to the country jail, was shot and killed by Jack Ruby on live camera. Ruby was the owner of a club who also had affiliations with a mob. He went on to explain that he acted out of rage over the death of President Kennedy. Ruby was later tried and found guilty of murder in March of the following year. A Texas appeal court, however, reversed the conviction and a new trial was set to be held. Ruby, unfortunately, could not make the trials. He died of a blood clot on January 3, 1967. Shortly after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, his vice president, Lyndon Johnson, took the oath of office inside Air Force One and became the 36th president of the United States of America. A special president's commission on the assassination of President John F. Kennedy was set up to investigate the killing. Headed by Chief Justice Earl Warren, the commission which was later known as the Warren Commission, concluded that Oswald walked alone and there was no conspiracy between Oswald and Ruby. However, the House of Representatives Assassination Committee in 1979 initiated another investigation. They found out that another shooter was involved in the assassination. There is, however, no concrete evidence as to these speculations. John F. Kennedy remains the youngest American president to be elected at 43, the last to be assassinated, and the youngest to die at 46.